Hi, this is Denise from Foursquare Marker Farm. Today, I'm making a card for the AAA Clean and Simple Card Challenge. And I'm using a stamp set here. Um, I think it's pink, fresh. Um, it's the Word Series, brilliant. Um, hopefully, I get that right, but I'll have that somewhere in the description. And the Clean and Simple Card Challenge, basically, um, is the as much white space as you possibly can and this um, one for this section is the um, bonus geometric shapes so I decided for this geometric shapes I'm going to use these stars from this brilliant set right here and I'm going to try to emboss them uh, the car stock I'm using today is uh, uh, Doris premium white cardstock and this one is just a 65 pound cardstock and because this is a clean and simple card I'm not uh, adding any layers to it so in this case I'm going to uh, make this a base or, or sorry use this as a layer itself and put a base on it so it doesn't have to be the heavy duty 110 pound paper I would normally use to make a card base. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this into four on my uh, Fisker's guillotine trimmer. And take some of this other stuff off of here so I can lay this flat. And I'm not going to cut this to layer size yet. I'm just gonna cut it to regular size. I have that cut out so just had to take a moment to fight with the camera I'm trying to keep your view from being skewed but because of the Bixby button and the way the clamp is holding the camera over it's it's heavy on the side here where the camera lens is and it's kind of tilting up so hopefully your picture is not too skewed so although I am not using the platform to do the stamping I'm using it to hold the paper into the correct position and also uh, for the phone I put underneath here. Uh, and the reason why I'm not using the platform is because on this clean and simple, we want to leave the maximum amount of white space as possible. And so I really would like to put the um, stamp off to the side. And the way I had this stamp the last time trying to get off to the side uh, it was kind of awkward to do it with the platform but let's see what happens here okay so what I really want to do first is set this up oh I you know I think the biggest problem actually was that because this Ranger is so huge trying to get it to the stamp with the embossing on it it's much easier to do it with the block over here that, that's a big problem right there. So just to make sure I really give it a nice, good squeeze when I put it on there. And also, I need to do this now and not later. Put my paper underneath here to catch the um, embossing fluid. Okay, so, oh, and somewhere there's an embossing buddy. So we're just going to be careful for a moment. All right, let's see. So I've decided that... I can give, ever get this guy out the package. That I want to. Huh. Let's make this a birthday card. So we're going to have a brilliant birthday. That's going to go on there. And I want to use these stars. So I want them off to the edge. I'm going to put. Maybe I put the brilliant birthday over here. And let's add the big ones in. I'm trying to see if there are enough solid ones over there. I'm going to add this other fine spread here. I'm going to check and see whether my brilliant birthday 
fits in that space. Okay, that looks good. Float that off the edge. Okay, I'm going to take that up and away. And I'm going to go ahead and set this block down here. Stamp that up. That looks pretty good. I never seem to really know how much to put on a stamp, which is why I do very much love the Tim Holtz stamping platform. And you know, just stamping platforms in general. Because that gives me the opportunity to try it again. Put that on the area. It always seems like a lot of guesswork involved in me. And I don't even know if you can actually see the embossing powder on the camera. Look at that. And you know what? In this case, like I said, normally it would have like an embossing buddy. I would try very hard not to get the powder anywhere else, but because of the sentiment, uh, and you know, I'm just going to like, bam, have that extra powder floating around. So I'm not even going to worry about the fact that I couldn't find it. Now, here we go. I am using a Wagner heat gun because I just happen to have a Wagner heat gun. And so you have to be really careful with this thing. Uh, and I'm hitting the camera. You have to be careful with it because this is like an industrial heat gun. I bought it years ago to take some paint off of wood, the woodwork, and it's really, really, really hot. Hotter than a craft one would be. And so I'm going to turn it on. Let it be on low. Watch my hands. Watch the stamps. And just very carefully... Now I'm going to flip it over and run it over the back. And then the front. Let me have a close look at it. I have to be careful. My paper is starting to curl. Oh, and then the magic happens. Bam, it's done. Put that baby down. Be careful where I put it down at. Just the camera. Oops, sorry about the bounce. Okay, and there we go. Let that cool for just a moment. And now I'm going to ink up my sentiment. This is where I wish I had a little silver ink, but I don't want this heat embossed, not this part right here. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to use the Pilot Hybrid ink, and I have been using the Memento for a while, uh, and I got it because it's good with um, the alcohol pens, the alcohol markers, and I wanted to learn how to alcohol color. but. One of the things I don't like about it is it's just not black enough for me. I really want a black black. So I saw this, uh, you know, I can't remember where I saw this from. I don't know if I saw this on sale at Pacatan's when they were closing or whether I saw it at Joann's or Michael's or something, but they, I couldn't find this memento for some reason. It's just like they never seemed to have it. And uh, there was something else I wanted and I couldn't find that one. So I figured I'd give this a try. And I like it a lot. I'm just gonna. It's a hybrid ink. So it dries a little faster than the 
pigment inks do, but it doesn't dry as fast as a dye ink would. So it's a little bit of both. I probably could emboss with this. Probably could. But it gives me a nice black. Very nice black. Look at that. That's a really nice black. Now I'm just going to ink it one more time. And like I said, this is why I love this platform. And I'm also going to be really careful about how much pressure I'm putting on here because this is a really fine sentiment and I don't want to press down. You know, let me put a piece of paper behind it so you can really have a good look at it. I don't want to press down and smear the thing. Grab a piece of paper out of here. Okay, look how nice and fine that script is on there. So I don't want to smear it at all. Just wanted that half part a little bit darker. Okay, and that is my really quick, clean and simple card for the case challenge. I just have one suggestion when you stamp if you're going to emboss find your embossing buddy i don't know where mine's went off to but <laughs> basically find yours it'll make things a lot better so we have our card base fold our card base in half and i would mount this card base right on top of here if i want to give it a little bit of dimension probably mount it with a bit of foam and it's just a nice simple easy card but the um the embossing kind of gives it an, an elegant look all right thanks a lot everybody uh this is probably like only my second card making video um, and hopefully i'll get a little better at Kind of going through the steps of the cart making video but it is something i'm really enthusiastic about something i'm really enjoy so i'll be working on it and so thank you for watching and if you are not a subscriber of my fiber arts videos go ahead and subscribe um, if you like the cart videos let me know and i will try to incorporate some more of the other crafts in the four square marker farm like the card making uh, into my repertoire videos thanks a lot have a great day